Another useful muscle for those who had a neck pain is the levator scapulae. It's one of these little muscles that is it's quite a deep muscle and um, it runs from the sort of posterior tubercles of the transverse processes of uh, from C1 down to about C4, which is probably about that area on this mod on this model. Don't forget, it's different depending on who you're treating, um, and it will run down and insert on the medial border of the scapula. Its its action is to elevate the the shoulder or elevate the scapula. So if you lift your shoulder up, but you can see the trapezius coming in there as well, but it's actually working around here. But it's one of these muscles that has a tendency to become very tight and, and quite irritable. It, um, because it lies deep to the uh, sternocleidomastoid and the splenius muscles, uh, the upper part and at the lower part is covered by the trapezius. It's basically only sort of in the middle part that you can find it. And and to di differentiate, if one was to just basically um, refer pain up to the skull, it could be from trapezius. And so therefore, if I get you to just lift uh, his traps up and squeeze the traps, sometimes that will say, oh yeah, that's the pain, and I'll go in that direction for the trapezius. Whereas um, the vagus scapulary can have um, a more of a local sort of pain and one pushing through the trapezius here and they can find it or bringing them forwards or backwards sorry posteriorly and then pushing into the vetus scapulae inside there uh, and palpating it anteriorly gives you an idea of where that trigger point is to be frank and most people they're going to dry needle and that's one of the beauties of dry needle they're going to dry needle at some point through uh, part of the trapezius to get in or when they try to trigger point it without dry needling they're basically pushing through the trapezius anyway um, it's, it's tested, you can see how it's working. It's not one of those muscles that I test to try and find because usually I'm working around this area and I'm using my uh, um, palpation and my subjective re uh, reports to help me um, decide whether uh, I need to, to needle there. I will do it after I've tried to needle the trapezius simply because um, then if it doesn't work then I, I may be thinking oh, levator scapula is involved in it. This pain referral pattern is very is different from trapezius as well. It, it's more just sort of al almost basically where it runs which is sort of down here across this area here down here. So it could be like down this area here and like that. That's its kind of referral pattern. Sometimes it will stretch further down the medial border of the scapula, even sometimes out across the top of the shoulder into the arm. So patients that are coming in with this sort of shoulder pain or neck pain may be sort of saying, OK, I've got a lot of pain here or it's referring out here. That may be, get, be an indication for you to think about treating levator scapulae. So we've spoken a little bit about trapezius. Often we will needle it. You, you can actually go through the trapezius muscle into, into levator scapulae, but the easiest way of needling it is to ask the client or patient to just basically put their arm in um, what in England we call a, a half Nelson in the wrestling world, but it's called a hammerlock in the US. And this is going to bring the, um, the muscle be lifted away from the, the rib cage, which will help us. Uh, um, in needling it so we don't go through any of the intercostal spaces and also because we're going to be doing the sort of needling at a tangent and pinching the fibers again there'll be less of a, a problem again we've cleaned the area um, I haven't cleaned it prior to, uh, to needling but I have cleaned it prior to, uh, to in you just marking it off and I will just say place introducer I'll find the levator scapulae that's the medial border of the scapula running down here I will come up and find the levator scapulae and the trigger point just as it's coming in here and it's quite a tricky little muscle to, to needle but if I can find a trigger point on it I will mark it with the tube leaving a little circle I've marked that off I will then clean the area Again, the World Health Organization suggested just the area is clean. You don't have to sterilize it, but I, if, yeah, for the sake of a, a few pennies in, in the swabs, we can, we can sterilize it. We will take out the needle in its introducer. Make sure it's inside. Now, this is where one needs to be careful. You, you want a needle sort of a, 
as much as you can, try and get the, the muscle, if you can, in a, a pincer grip and inferior to superior direction at an angle. So I found the area, say, that I found that the trigger point was. I just place it on and then a little tap and then I take the introducer off and I introduce the needle in at an angle because I don't want to be going down. I could go down into the through the rib cage and um, I mean, that's quite a depth to get into there, so you're unlikely to. But actually, I can feel that. Can you feel that biting now? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a weird sort of bitey feeling you can feel in the in the uh, um, grasping the needle, this needle grasp. And then we can either do the treatment as pistoning in and out. As I said, in the inferior to superior, at an angle, so we're not going down grip the fibers either like that or like that but usually it's just easier to grip the fibers in this way and then just needle into the area and often they will feel quite a lot of relief from uh, from this technique again alcohol swab or cotton wool over the area just retract the needle removing the needle ischemic pressure holding it into place and just get the arm, the patient to relieve their arm and then you can get them to either do the stretch or to see what's happening to make, to check how they're feeling.